Sometimes games come along and they remind us that playing with friends is often better. From games that brought us hilarious moments to instances of pure rage, whether they were bullet-filled action, simple side-scrollers, or rage-filled climbers, there were some co-op games this year that brought with them plenty of memories for me, so as per usual, I'd love to share some of them with you. And hopefully, as they did for me, they'll impart upon you some good times with your friends. Okura is a gorgeous little two-player puzzle adventure that looks to recapture your childhood, yet also demonstrate how the world that you may see might be entirely different through someone else's eyes. This little side-scroller tells the tale of two boys who flip the script on the classic dad's off-to-get-milk story by running away from home. They quickly realize on this arduous adventure that the only way they continue is by learning to work together. Only there's one issue. Despite being in the exact same place, the world that they see is completely different. One sees a vibrant, colorful world as if it was right out of a picture book, and the other sees a cold world of metal and machine. These worlds are not only aesthetically different, however, they have paths and obstacles that are unique to them that the other simply cannot see. Therefore, the only way to progress in this game is to communicate back and forth until you have an understanding on how to progress. Much like in the real world, we may all be in similar situations, but that doesn't mean that we see eye to eye. Only by communicating can we bridge the gap and move forward, and that is exactly the message that this game goes for. It's always great to see games that pop up out of absolutely nowhere and just explode. Lethal Company is a great example of this. It's a game that was made by only one developer, and it outsold Call of Duty. The game is simple. You're a contractor hired by the company to salvage abandoned industrialized moons for completely worthless scrap. This game proved that we love our profit. We we love hearing our friends scream and suffer, and we are willing to work real hard to make ends meet. Even if the end that's being met is your body inside the ravenous maws of any number of demonic entities. It may not be the best job, but it does show us one thing, that horror and comedy apparently go hand in hand in unholy matrimony. This game can often be terrifying, delivering jump scares out of nowhere that cause everyone playing it to become professional voice actors. This in part due to the game's amazing proximity chat and voice effects that accompany it. If you just want to laugh and scream your hearts out, start working at the company today. It's insane to me how a game as good as Remnant 2 somewhat flew under the radar this year. As a single player game, it is already truly outstanding. It takes tight third person gunplay and adds it to the familiar Souls-like formula, and then creates a bunch of engaging story-rich locations for us to explore. However, where this game truly shines is in two fields. It's replayability and co-optional gameplay. This game is second to none in terms of replayability, as it utilizes tile-based procedural generation to spice up the world, the enemies, and the the bosses within it. You can even find secrets on your fifth run when you find yourself spawning at an entirely new location off jump. This is all seamlessly integrated into the three-player multiplayer. As everyone's runs are different, it doesn't really matter how far ahead of your friends you are. You can drop in, be level appropriate, and also be fighting bosses and discovering stories that you may have never seen. Remnant 2 is packed with content, secrets, and bosses, and if you haven't got a squad for it, go solo or just round up your friends now. Good co-op games are truly hard to find in this day and age, and even if The Outlast Trials does throw away any and all forms of suspense, it's still a bloody blast. If you've played an Outlast game before, you would know their particular brand of horror. You'd know that they don't do subtlety, and they go for the more nonsensical theme park roller coaster gore galore circus route with their horror, where sawing some guy's legs off in a Catholic church is just a basic puzzle, and another Tuesday for all involved. The game puts you in the shoes of some poor bastards that the Murkoff Corporation dragged off the street in order to test methods of evolving humanity on. Well, that's what they tell you, but I have no idea how throwing you into blood-filled life-or-death trials that are full of an entire parade of psychos is going to do anything other than give you severe mental illnesses. This game will see you following objectives, running and screaming in the dark after you've run out of batteries on your night vision goggles that were conveniently drilled into your head, and then hopefully escaping the trials, but worst of all, being graded on your performance by a scientist at the end. And for some reason, this scientist seems like a disappointed and patronizing school teacher, and that is the worst of it all. Sons of the Forest is an excellent survival game that'll see you having a forced and not so relaxing holiday on an island full of cannibals that take the saying, eat the rich, a little bit too literally. Tasked with tracking down a missing billionaire on a remote piece of land, you and a team of private mercenaries are shot out of the sky and forced to survive off the land, which is conveniently full of tunnel systems that the rich use as private retreats and not so conveniently the home of many mutated cannibals that are not a fan of your trespass. I wasn't a massive fan of this game when it came out due to the way its early access was handled. Frankly, it was worse than the original by quite a bit, but I said let it cook and cook it did. Now, nearly a year after its release, I will offer no complaints. Survival horror games 
games with friends are just great. So provided you don't mind the dark, creatures with a few too many legs or arms, and a whole lot of cutting down trees, give this one a go if you haven't. You can't have a year without a million and one roguelike releases, so it's certainly not original, but we gotta give props to Ember Knights, which is a standout. Combining hack and slash styled action games with roguelites, it's a one to four player tale where you're playing as an Ember Knight. A flickering, sentient slashing flame, and the last spark of hope against a mad sorcerer named Praxis, who's given a thick suck to the Ember Tree, and in the process corrupted the entire world. Now you'll need to pick up and get a grasp on the game's weaponry and skills, build synergies with your friends, and utilize game-changing relics to plow through hordes of unwavering fiends. If you've ever wanted to co-op Hades, this doesn't quite feel that far off gameplay-wise. Whilst it is certainly a lot more shallow, this isn't exactly a bad thing in this case. It still has plenty of build options, giving it just enough depth, which makes for a very fun, enjoyable, and relatively challenging roguelike experience that is well worth looking at. Red and Fred looked at difficult platforming climbers of the past like Jump King and thought, you know what, we can one-up that. Let's take the formula, add one more player, and then tie them together with a rope so it's no longer a skill issue, it's a collective skill issue now. Is this fun or just rage-filled? Well, that depends on the players, but the objective does remain simple. Get to the top of the mountain. Penguins are flightless avians, but that doesn't mean that they don't want a bird's eye view, which you'll really have to help them get. In order to get to the tippity top of this peak, you'll need excellent communication, timing, and teamwork, unless you want your two adorable penguin climbing pals to go crashing back down the mountain in a reverse speed run. Unlike other games in this genre, they did opt to be somewhat nice by including optional checkpoints, which will probably save many a relationship from crashing and burning. For the King 2, released with very mixed reviews, but after a few patches, the popular RPG sequel has turned things around. This game is a classic turn-based RPG-styled adventure with blends of tabletop and roguelike elements. After the death of the good King Bronner, the Queen raised the banners of retribution in the first game, but alas, turns out all may not have been as it seemed, and the subjects of the realm have succumbed to a forceful yearn for the mines. For the King 2 has a great gameplay core with tons of procedural elements, 12 playable classes, and a familiar RNG dice roll that does add a bit of extra chaos. Whether you opt to coordinate, strategize, and slay together, or just be a chaotic little shit that does things that are certainly not in the best interest of the party, you will have fun on this game, I promise. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is the first 2D platforming side-scrolling Mario has seen since, uh, don't quote me on this, Mario Maker in 2015? I guess you'll have to let me know because I just went through Christmas and New Year's and one Google is far too far away. Anyway, whilst Wonder may be a step back in terms of co-op play as it doesn't allow you to interact with other players and instead has you all kind of gravitating around one another like codependent ghosts as you run through it, it is undeniably an incredibly fun time that brings a lot of fun, wacky mechanics to the formula. It'll see you venturing to the nearby Flower Kingdom to stop Bowser who's turned himself into a giant castle using the Wonder Fruit. Ah, Bowser, he never gets tired of being a menace and we never get tired of ruining his dreams, apparently. When it comes to live sim games this year, there was a standout. It's my time at Sandrock, and it's full of enough character to satisfy the ravenous maw of any cozy gamers that are looking for their next hit. Set 330 years after a cataclysmic event decimated modern technology, you'll arrive at the rundown desert community of Sandrock as a fledgling builder with the goal of restoring it to its former glory. You'll need to turn the basic skeleton of a workshop into a well-oiled production facility. Building life-altering machines and turning the barren lands into a flourishing, vibrant farm state along the way. Which is no small task, mind you, as you'll often need to dive into dangerous ancient ruins to scavenge the parts you need. Of course, it won't be only the machines you'll be tending to. The people of Sandrock will also demand your attention, and considering how deep and diverse the cast and their storylines are in this game, it might just keep you busy for a while. Totally separate from the single-player experience, the co-op gameplay is more akin to a sandbox mode full of building and battles, but it still has a ton of fun and you'll get to watch the desert community flourish and transform in the meantime. Endless Dungeon is a neat mix of tower defense and roguelite games that'll see you shipwrecked on an abandoned space station alongside other trapped castaways, some of which have been marooned there for decades. The only way out of this purgatory is to reach the core of your ship by guiding an ever so fragile crystal bot through hordes of ravenous monstrosities that all want to demolish it on sight like it somehow said something poor about all of their respective mothers at the same time. To do this, you'll need to build up your very own suicide squad by recruiting shipwrecked heroes, learning their individual expertise, how they synergize with 
one another, and then preparing yourself to run the gauntlet. It's not all about firepower though, as you'll need to cook up a strategy by fortifying your positions with turrets and using enemies' weaknesses against them. For instances, bugs, like most living things, really just don't like fire, and they especially don't like fire being applied to them via a flamethrower. This is a bullet-filled time that was not super well received on launch and still has a bit to add, but it is playable by three, and it is absolutely worth picking up on sale. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game that graces this list not as a recommendation, but more uh, of a requirement, let's say. It's hilarious how this game is so big, and yet there's so little to actually say about it that you probably haven't already heard. When it came to games that objectively pushed the envelope this year, Baldur's Gate 3 truly stood in a class of its own. Larian created a game that is not only absurd in its scale, but also its quality throughout. If you've not heard the raving masses already telling you how good this game is, it's an RPG within the Dungeons & Dragons world that is truly a one-stop shop for gamers. And even if you don't like the idea of rolling the d20 and its turn-based combat, it has something for everyone. Better yet, you can jam the whole thing with four players in online co-op, or two players in local split-screen to make the whole thing better. And this game was truly deserving of Game of the Year in 2023. Maybe you should find out why if you haven't already. Fans of the monster collecting style games were not left out this year either as Cassette Beast took the premise of Pokemon and then ran with it all the way to the bank. Better yet on top, they even added co-op features which amongst the gorgeous style and lo-fi music makes for a relaxing yet deep two-player RPG with fun and creative combos for you to discover. After washing up face down on the sandy beaches of New Wirral, the residents of your newly discovered island report having trouble with strange beasts around the place, tasking you with fighting them and giving you a magic cassette player that somehow allows you to assume monster form by copying them onto tapes, this game is a lesson on the methodology of the old yoink and twist, taking a familiar nostalgic formula and then creating something new. It's wild to say that simply comparing this game to Pokemon might actually be underselling it. It's really, really good. Humanity is in bad shape. The year is 2700 and a young scavenger roams the desert. There she finds an old guardian robot which she fixes up and as it springs back into life by her side, she realizes she might be able to give humanity a fighting chance on her quest to survive and overcome a virus that turned robots against humankind. Fittingly, this game is named RoboQuest and it's very on brand. This is one of this year's sneaky gems. It's a one to two player arcade styled roguelite that'll see you blasting through the ruins of old humanity, slaying corrupted robots with a diverse collection of weapons and finding more adorable little robo pals as you go. There is a million compliments to give this game. The builds are diverse, the movement and gunplay is tight, fun and smooth, the soundtrack bops real good, and the storyline is perfectly complementary to the game's style. It is well worth looking at and a really fun time with a party of two. I definitely recommend cranking the difficulty up if you love a challenge and don't mind spending a bit more time with this game. Astral Ascent is yet another roguelite, but this time it's a 2D side-scroller where you're locked in a prison called The Garden that is guarded by 12 Zodiacs. These 12 are experienced combatants and the 12 bosses that the game asks you to overcome. At first glance, this game instantly reminded me of a 2D side-scrolling version of the already excellent two-player co-op game Wizard of Legends, and it turns out I wasn't that far off. It actually has the same music composer. Unlike most roguelites, it places a pretty heavy emphasis on spells rather than the usual weapons and abilities, and this works wonders in its incredibly fun and smooth combat system. It's a game that starts off slow but truly builds as it goes. Each of the bosses provide a good, unique challenge, and the runs just get better and better as you go. To call it back, to Wizard of Legend, you can also play this one with two on local split screen and on Steam Remote Play for online. There were a lot of good roguelites this year, but this one might just be the best. Thanks a bunch for watching. As per usual, if you enjoyed the content, make sure you just hit me with a sub. I don't know why I slapped myself, don't ask. I'm sure there'll be plenty more content between you and me in 2024. Happy New Year's, by the way. Hopefully, I'll see you around these parts again soon. Take it easy.